In this video, you're gonna learn how to use Luminar AI to batch edit this series of portraits, taking them from these befores to these final images, including the sky swaps. This is gonna be worth watching. Hello, my friends. My name is Pi, welcome to SLR Lounge. This is your place for no-nonsense photography education, always, always with a smidgen of nonsense. So look, we're teaming up with Skylum to bring you a series of Luminar AI tutorials. Luminar AI, with its AI plus batch processing functionality, is becoming an incredibly powerful tool. And I'm gonna show you just what it can do. In this video, we're gonna be focusing on a portrait workflow. And what Luminar gives us is a very different look and a very different take on the traditional kind of photography workflow. In a traditional workflow, we might kind of be, you know what? Let's just dive straight in. I'm gonna show you as we go. So first, let's go ahead and load our images. Step zero, get your images into Luminar. So let's click the plus and let's go to add folder with images. Now I have prepared uh, some exercise files for you. So there are four portrait exercise files. These are JPEGs. because so I want you guys to see that you can edit with JPEGs, you can edit with RAW files, whatever you guys wanna use. Uh, but you can still get great results just with JPEG files. So you can use these, you can download them in the description of the video or feel free to just use your own portraits as well. All right, let's go ahead and select these images. I have them already loaded into a folder. So I'm just gonna press select folder and it's gonna load right here in this catalog view. So in this catalog view, we essentially have kind of all the images and the folders that are loaded and available to us inside of Luminar. Now, if this is our primary menu, I wanna point out that we also have a secondary menu, okay? So for example, if I go to templates, you'll notice that we have this kind of, well, working area where we can make our selections, we can make our adjustments. But on the right side, you actually have a secondary menu. In fact, if you go to edit, you have that secondary menu as well. So here we have all of the essential editing tools. Here we have creative tools, here portrait tools, professional tools, and so forth. So each of these primary menus has that sub menu. On the template side, we have my collection, which is where we're gonna place our own templates. I'm gonna explain what those are in just a moment. But I wanted to point that out. So over here, you have kind of this working area where you're gonna be making your adjustments. And in the middle, we have our image preview area. So this is where we're gonna see basically all of the adjustments that we make applied to our image. Only it's not actually applied, it's showing us a preview. Luminar is a non-destructive editor. And that's fantastic, right? Because we can go back, we can make changes, and the only time that your edits make it into the photograph is actually when you export. So at any point in time, you can go to these catalogs and you can revert and make changes and do whatever, and when you export, that's when they're actually baked into the images. Okay, so let's go to step number one. Now this is where you're gonna see kind of my typical Luminar workflow deviates quite a bit from what I'm used to. And I would imagine that it will on your guys' side too. So here's what I would say. If you are completely new to editing, fantastic, because you're gonna kind of learn a different approach from the ground up. If you are used to a traditional workflow, which I would describe as starting with kind of the nuts and bolts, you're about to have everything kind of turn on its head because what we're gonna start with is broad kind of our broad vision for the photograph, and then we're gonna work backwards to the nuts and bolts. Yeah, and you can make your own workflow. I'm just showing you kind of the, the workflow that I like inside of Luminar. So step one, we're gonna start with a template. Now templates are basically a collection of settings that will either be your starting point for your image or they're gonna be a finishing point for your images, just depending on how far you wanna take them. So Skylum has prepared this kind of grouping of, of different templates that we have available to you just right upon install. And you can always get more of these as well. You can create your own as well. At the top, it's gonna try to detect what this photo is and give you some suggestions, okay? Now, because my subject is super small in this photograph, Luminar is probably detecting this image as more of a landscape photo. But if I actually select one of the other images that's more of a close-up portrait, then, yep, it actually switches over to portrait recommendations. So it's super cool seeing exactly how the AI is kind of functioning, looking at the images and seeing and giving us suggestions, which I love. So right here, what we're gonna do is actually scroll down to portraits. And uh, let's just start with monochrome, just to kind of see what's happening. So as I click these different 
uh, templates that are available to us, you can see our preview get updated with these different settings. Now what's actually happening is as soon as I apply one of these templates, if I go to the edit menu, you're gonna see little dots appear next to some of these sections. So essentially anything that has a dot next to it means that your template is adjusting that area. So if I open up light, I'm gonna see different adjustments being made. If I open up enhance, I'm gonna see adjustments being made. So that tells you very quickly what the template is actually adjusting and you can flip through and see if there's any uh, adjustments. So it looks like there's adjustments being made in the face and the skin for that specific template, okay? So what I'm gonna do is go back, let's go and just click on experimental and let's see if we can find an interesting starting point. Okay, so clicking burn film, you can see that the templates are not only a collection of settings, but they also include overlays. So we get these cool sort of light leaks in this experimental section, which I really dig. Let's go and flip down. Okay, I really like this feather light look as a starting point. Now, if you find the template to be a little bit on the heavy side, one great thing about them is if you scroll down right here, actually you don't have to scroll down, it's right there. Just go look down at the bottom side. You can actually dial back essentially the opacity of this setting and we can say, oh, you know, I really like it kind of right around that 40, 50% sort of effect right here. It looks really good. So this is gonna be my starting point. Now my step two in this workflow is see if you wanna make any tweaks to the LUT. Yes, we actually have LUTs inside of Luminar. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a LUT is, first, I want you to go to the edit side and you're gonna click on the, I believe it's in the creative spot and go down to mood. Now you'll notice that it already has a LUT selected. So this template selected a LUT. So what the heck is a LUT? And I believe the one that it had selected was, uh, I think it was Bakersfield or one of these. So what a LUT is, is a essentially a mapping of colors. There's tons of different crazy explanations for LUTs. I wanna simplify this down to this. Imagine just basically taking, you know, red is red, blue is blue, green is green, yellow is yellow. All your colors are kind of match up. When it comes out of your camera, the colors are the way that they should essentially be. What a LUT is, is a remapping of those colors. So essentially, it's a file that says, okay, reds are gonna go slightly orange. Orange are gonna go slightly red. Yellows are gonna go a little bit toward the orange side, so you kind of pull all the tones together. Greens are gonna go towards teal. Blues are gonna go towards teal. So what it's doing is basically color grading your photograph by remapping the existing color tones. Absolutely fantastic for color grading, creating cinematic looks, all of that. And you can also load custom LUTs into this. So it's a super powerful tool. And what we're gonna do now is just tweak the LUT that we have used, okay? So I'm just gonna flip through to find a LUT that I like as kind of my starting point. And I love this Santa Barbara vibe. I like the warmth that it has. I like the blue tone. So we're gonna go ahead and switch this over to Santa Barbara. I can tweak the amount of the LUT. So I like it a little bit more heavy. I'm gonna pull the contrast back a little bit just to flatten it out. And I can also adjust saturation of the LUT as well. So I'm gonna pull saturation a little bit up. Okay, so we started with a template. We have modified our LUT. Now part three is gonna be any significant AI-based adjustments that are gonna really dramatically change the image. What I'm gonna do here is actually swap the sky. So I'm hoping that you're kind of seeing this adjustment in workflow from we're, we're working from this kind of overall vision of the image and working backwards to the nuts and bolts versus our traditional workflow is nuts and bolts and then going towards the overall vision, right? And this is possible because Luminar gives us a completely different set of tools. So we have a very different way of looking at editing, which I think is, is personally fun. So let's do this. We're gonna go to Sky AI. I'm gonna actually swap the sky and we can just flip through here and actually look and see which sky we like most. Now, the thing is, is that when choosing a sky, if you want it to be convincing, you need to make sure that the main thing is making sure that the light direction matches in the sky to your image. See, if I actually zoom in, you can see on Derek that the light is actually coming from the top and from the right side. So if I choose one of these skies where the light looks like it's coming from the left side, it's not gonna make sense. This image looks like it makes complete sense because the light is coming from the right side as we can see on the highlights of the cloud. So 
that's a just kind of a general rule for sky swaps in general. I'm going to flip through here until I find something that I really like. Let's see. This is what's fun. Like, you can test out all of these different skies so easily uh, with the software. It's, it's really fun. I like this one a lot. Um, let's see, that was number three. And also, you can load uh, additional skies if you have them on your own. You can also purchase additional packs. I believe they, they have a whole marketplace for all sorts of extras. Okay, I like this sky a lot. This is Dramatic Sunset 7. The issue, though, like I mentioned, is that the light is coming from the left side, right? So if it's this simple, the adjustment is actually quite easy. If you go to Advanced Settings, you can just go to Flip Sky. And automatically, this looks far more convincing. Even though the, the light in the scene is kind of coming from a little bit higher, it, it it's convincing enough that the light direction kind of matches up, right? Most people are not going to scrutinize that and be like, oh, the sun looks like it's down here, but the light would have been up here. If it's this close, you should be fine. At least that's what I say. Okay, so what we're going to do now is make some adjustments to that sky. Now, I know what you might be thinking. So far, you know, if you were to do this without me talking, this is going to take you five to ten minutes, right? You're not going to be able to do that for every image if you're delivering, let's say, 50 to 100 images. And that's where the power of batch processing is coming in. Because what we're going to be doing at the end of this is saving this as our own template. So I don't want you to worry about that right now. I want you to focus on creating the look. So what we're gonna do is take the atmospheric haze slider up. Now what this slider does is it blends the, it essentially blends the sky with the original background. It's dialing down the opacity of, of this sky. I have to take credit for this slider because I suggested it to the team way back and they implemented it. I mean, I can't really take credit because they did the work, but I suggested it. Anyway, I like to take this slider, that's like my one claim to fame with this software. Uh, I like to take the slider usually all the way up, somewhere between 50 to 100. Um, and honestly, the, the lighter the better. I love this subtle look when you have an image that's bright in daylight like this. This kind of subtle sky I find works very well for it. So I'm going to take this up to 90. I'm also going to see if I want to tweak my sky temperature a little bit. And I do. I want to just warm this up a little. So it has a little bit of this kind of soft California kind of sky to it. Uh, and then from here, we can make additional tweaks. So what I can do is actually zoom in, and it's already done a really great job of masking around these trees, which is pretty insane. That's, again, the benefits of, of AI is we can literally have sliders to do this. And previously, we're talking like ridiculous masking and everything like that. Um, so I like everything. What I'm going to do is dial the horizon blend up. What this is going to do is it's detecting the horizon line right here, and it's just going to blend the sky softly along that horizon. I could adjust the position, but it, it did a good job detecting it, so I don't need to do that. Relight scene is going to tweak the colors in your existing scene to kind of better match the uh, the light of the sky. Okay, so I'm going to bring this up to about maybe 30-ish. And what I'm going to do is also adjust my close gaps. I'm going to pull close gaps up. This is going to kind of tweak those gaps between different objects. I'm just going to kind of scan and make sure that these are good. And they are good. It's done such a good job. It's crazy. I don't need to do any defocusing. Okay, so if I bring this up, I can actually defocus the sky. But noticing that the trees are sharp, I don't really need any defocusing whatsoever. So I'm going to leave this at zero. Um, if you find that your background is blurred out, then I would definitely defocus so you don't have a sharp image there. Okay, now within this step, if there's any other AI-based adjustments, make those. Okay, so other AI-based adjustments that I would consider is like face, skin, body adjustments. Body is actually completely new to uh, Luminar AI, where we can actually tweak the shape of the body. So if I pull this over to the right side, it should detect. And yeah, you can see it basically pulling in from the hips which on this shot, I actually feel like on this set might be useful because he's wearing this large sweater uh, and it kind of, it's pretty poofy in general. So we might as well just kind of bring that up a little bit. I would always keep your adjustments on this side more on the subtle side um, of everything. But if you have any face adjustments, if you wanna add a little bit of light to the face, if you wanna tweak the eyes, usually I do like to do this kind of stuff. Um, what I would do though, is I would apply these over a closer portrait um, just to test it out. But so let's save this for later in our template when we make that adjustment. For now, let's just kind of leave it. We're di we did one based on that, kind of just the body AI. So let's leave it with our sky and body AI and call it good. Okay, so now we're moving to step four and this 
is when we tweak. This is when we go to our nuts and bolts and we work on our curves and we work on our contrast and we're gonna do that. I'm gonna show you a couple new tools for this and maybe some tools that you actually overlooked. So what we're gonna do is go to light first and I'm gonna go ahead and just dial in uh, the exposure that I want for the image. So I'm gonna pull this up a bit. Let's bring it up to like, I think plus one is actually pretty nice right there. Okay, now smart contrast, I like to save these sliders for final tweaks and you're gonna see why. In my template, I'm gonna save out a different set of kind of contrast adjustments. And then what you're gonna do is when you save that out, you're gonna leave these contrast highlights and shadows zeroed out so you can use these as fine tuning options for each image that you apply the template to. So for now, let's go and work in curves. Okay, I'm gonna pull up from the bottom. What this is gonna do is create a matte look. So anything that's darker than this black point goes to a dark gray. Okay, now I'm gonna pull up on the midpoint and then I'm gonna pull down on the highlights. So anything that's brighter than this white point is gonna to go to a bright gray, okay? Now we're just gonna bring the midpoint up a little bit. Okay, your tone curve is still just a tone curve. That looks great. All right, let's go down to color a little bit. I actually want to remove a tiny bit of saturation from the image. So let's pull back so this image has kind of a, a slightly more subtle look and vibe to it. Okay, we're gonna pull back just a bit. Let's go to negative 15-ish. And what we can also do, we can always go back to that, um, that mood uh, where we set our LUT and we can actually pull back the, the LUT. I'm just gonna pull it back to zero just because I felt like the skin tone was getting a little bit too orangish. Okay, let's go back here and we're gonna go back to light, make sure that our curve is good. Okay, I like that. I love the contrast. The way everything looks is fantastic. All right, color, you can get as deep into this as you want. You have full HSL available to you as well. So if I wanna zoom in and kind of look at Derek's skin tone, I can zoom in. I think his skin tone looks actually really solid right now. But if you wanted to jump into the HSL, you could always tweak the hues and adjustments just like you would, uh, you know, it, and however your workflow would typically go. So I'm really liking this so far. Now this is, I, I've got my tweaks kind of dialed in. If I hold down backslash, you can see the before versus the after. Is that not crazy? Is it not crazy that we can create this with just sliders? No masking, just sliders. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is this is where I'm gonna save it out to a new template. So step five is to save all of your settings to a new template. The way you're gonna do that is go down to right here where it actually shows you're using Featherlight template, but it's edited now. Now you're gonna click on this three dots and you're gonna press save. All right, so now if we go to templates and we click that secondary menu, the My Collection menu, you're gonna see under user templates, the template you just created. All you're gonna do at this point is you're going to rename this to whatever you like. And I'm gonna call this Pies SoCal Edit. I'd usually give it a little bit of a better name, but you know, we're gonna go with that for now. So at this point, this is where you're gonna batch edit all of the other images in your collection. And all you're gonna do is select those images right down here on the thumbnail strip, and you're gonna press Control Shift S or Command Shift S, and now you're gonna see all of the images are gonna update with everything your sky, your body enhancements, your face, your adjustments, all the AI-based tools that you used, everything gets updated with this. Now this is the point where I'd recommend going to each of the images and just look through them to make sure that everything looks kind of right and cohesive. So on this image, I might go back and I might actually just, let's jump back to the creative side, let's adjust the sky a little bit, let's pull up that uh, brightness just a bit. I'm also gonna go back here, right to light, we're gonna bring up the exposure a little bit more. Okay, the, the blend looks pretty good on the sky. I forgot to check the blend real quick, but let's just zoom in and give it a look. Yeah, the blend looks nice. What I'm gonna do is just go back to this tone curve and let's see if we can get our... Okay, so the blend looks nice. I'm gonna just make a couple tweaks in the tone curve itself. So I'm just gonna get that kind of highlight point a little bit more defined. 
and let's bring the blacks up just a little bit. So I'm just making subtle tweaks to the overall curve. This is where I can actually go back to portrait as well. And I can now incorporate kind of face and skin, right? So if I want to put a little bit of light on the skin, I can do that. Uh, you can slim face as well. Like you have all these different AI tools available. What I would suggest is just keeping everything very subtle. I do like to add a little bit to the eyes. So what I'm going to do is actually whiten the eyes a bit. Okay. I'm going to enhance the eyes a bit. And there's this iris flare option where it'll actually add a little bit of a, a catch light underneath the eye. So I'm going to dial this back so you can see that catch light kind of going in right there. I'm going to put this at around 50. And then we're going to bring the whitening a little bit up. Okay, dark circles, we're going to remove. And look at this, like the way that it's detecting all this stuff. It's pretty crazy. All right, I'm going to go to skin. We're going to see if we want to do any kind of skin adjustments. I do think I want a little bit of softening going on. So let's take this up just a bit. And you can also do skin defect removal, which is going to locate and kind of remove any uh, defects. It's like, it's kind of a harsh name for it, but it's like blemishes and stuff like that. It'll, it'll find those and, and kind of tweak and adjust them. Um, and usually it does a really good job with it. So this is where I'm going to leave this and I'm actually going to save this out one more time. So I'm going to save this out again and then I'm going to reapply it to the other image. So for this image, notice that we've kind of gone from, we've made some pretty significant adjustments to this. So all I'm going to do is update that. So I can do this in a couple different ways. I can actually go back to the templates. I have my edit edit. So what I'm going to do is just remove this one. I don't need this one anymore. And then we're going to go ahead and rename this. Let's call it, let's give it actually a good name. Let's call it SoCal Bright SoCal Sunkissed. Uh, let's just call it SoCal Sunkissed. That's a, that's a great name. Nice little alliteration there. So going to this next image, I'm just going to select um, SoCal Sunkissed. All right, so now all I'm going to do is just use the template again. You can see as soon as it updates, we get all of those adjustments. We get that bright skin. It looks fantastic. You can even apply it back over the previous ones and see if, you know, you kind of like it a little bit more on these ones. And I think I might like it just a little bit brighter, but that might be a tiny bit too bright. So I might make a tiny adjustment there where I kind of go in between. But now that I have this done, I can save out this template and process everything with it. So this whole set can now be processed with this one single template, which makes it very, very powerful. So that's it. I'm going to adjust the exposure on these a little bit. And now here are the befores versus the final batch edited afters. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. I know it's a little bit long, but it's a very different look at a workflow that I think y'all might appreciate. And if you did enjoy it, I'd love for you to give the video a like that helps us out a lot in the YouTube algorithm. Please comment, let us know what you'd like to learn next. As always, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so our next video that goes up, you're actually notified about it. In the meantime, you guys can find links to Luminar in the description of the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.